Hello, my friends. Welcome to my review on the Laura Lee Cat's Pajamas eyeshadow palette. This palette isn't out yet, but there people sure have a lot to say about it. So if you want to hear what I have to say about it after actually physically trying it, stay tuned. Very quickly before I go any further, because I know not everybody's gonna watch the end of this video, I do wanna tell you about my relationship with Laura, just so you know, because I know a lot of people are feeling like all of these reviews are biased. First of all, Laura knows exactly what my channel's about. She sent it to me anyway, so that really speaks to her confidence in this palette, because she knows I'm gonna be 100% honest with it. Laura and I met on a, at a rooftop bar at Generation Beauty's cocktail party. I think it was New York, but what happened was, is I walked out onto the rooftop bar and I saw Manny MUA and Patrick Starr. I walked up to them, I said hello, I introduced themselves. Manny had just done some collab. I want to say it was the Maybelline collab, but I can't say that for sure. But anyway, so I walked up to Manny and Patrick and I introduced myself and I congratulated Manny on his collaboration and he said, have you met Laura Lee? And I said, no, I haven't. And I had seen maybe one of her videos. I wasn't subscribed. I didn't really know much about her. I said, no, I turned around and I shook her hand and I said, hello. And then I turned around and Manny and Patrick were like steps away and their backs were turned to me. So they probably either, I, I'm not judging them. I'm not saying that they were rude to me. I'm not saying that they were not wanting to talk to me, but it did seem like they didn't really want to talk to me. <laughs> that was my impression. Uh, and that's okay. That's all right. I'm not, my feelings are not hurt. It's okay. It happens. Not a big deal. So Laura and I ended up talking for about 30 minutes. And looking back on it, it was an extremely one-sided conversation where I was mostly talking about myself. And I feel kind of bad about that. But she was so nice to me. You know, she was so nice and she was so down to earth and so kind. Since then, we've kept in touch with each other on social media, kind of keeping touch on Snapchat and Instagram, but not a lot of conversation. Uh, if Laura had a problem, she would never call me. <laughs> <laughs> and I would never call her because we are not that close. But we're at the point where we both like each other as people and uh, we do keep in touch online. Oh my gosh. Like, I don't know if you've kept up on videos about Laura Lee's cat pa cat's pajamas or kept up anywhere on Laura's social media or anything, but man, people have some opinions about this palette. No joke. So what I'm gonna do for you is I am going to put aside the fact that this is Laura Lee's palette. I am putting aside that I have met Laura Lee. I am not even thinking about that as I review this for you because I know that is what you as consumers deserve. But I do want to tell you a little bit about this palette and Laura and her company. So let's talk about Laura Lee Los Angeles. It is a brand new clothing slash makeup brand. She did release a line of clothing first, which was hats and shirts and things like that. And now she's releasing an eyeshadow palette. It will be available at lauraleelosangeles.com on October 30, 13th, not the 30th, the 13th, and it will be $40, and that is where a lot of people have problems, but we're going to break that down in a minute. It is cruelty-free, vegan, talc-free, and made in the USA. Let's talk a little bit about what you get. So you can see the palette here. It has a smooth, glittery cover to it. It is a cardboard packaging. Inside you get a mirror that is kind of uh, hidden a little bit by some of these flowers, and then the flowers inside, and then you get 10 two-gram pans. There is some uh, misinformation out there that I do want to clarify. On the front of the box that I'll show you right now, it does say 23 grams net weight. When Jeffree Star did his video on this palette, he mistakenly said that these were 0.23 gram pans. Just to give you an idea, this is the Lorac Pro 2 palette. These pans are 0.55 grams. So 0.23 grams would be about half the size. And you can see that there's no way that the shadow in here is half the size of one of these as far as weight, unless they were extremely thin. These are two gram pans, not 0.23 grams. The shades in here are named after different things that have been 
said in Laura's comments about her. So, okie dokie, scatterbrain, bomb diggity, cray cray, redonkulous, things like that. If you've never heard the term cat's pajamas before, it's kind of like the cat's meow. It's when you say something is amazing, you call it the cat's pajamas. Um, I believe it is a southern term from the 1920s, if I remember my Googling correctly. This palette is very glittery and shiny on the outside. If you know Laura's Instagram and her Snapchat and all of that, she can definitely glam up on the outside. But on the inside, she's just a good old country girl with her flowers and very, very down to earth. Let's talk a little bit more about formula. You may know that I am an ingredient junkie, so we're gonna do a little ingredient analysis here. I did tell you that there is no talc in this product. It is a mica-based product. There is ethahexyl palmitate in it, and that is a palm oil derivative. So if you are anti-palm oil for environmental reasons, you don't wanna get this. If you have an allergic reaction to ethahexyl palmitate, of course you don't wanna get this. It is an irritant for some people. Also, phenoxyethanol is the preservative used. There are no parabens, but some people are also sensitive to phenoxyethanol. So just so you know, that's in here. This is not a lip safe palette. There is ferric ferrocyanide in it, which is not lip safe. It is eye safe. But other than that, I mean, there's a really very small ingredient list for this product, which is typical of high quality indie brands. I did do a getting ready with me with this palette. And one of the big critiques I got was that I was comparing it price per gram to mainstream Sephora brand products. And people were saying, well, she's a brand new indie brand. She shouldn't be charging what she charges. It should be closer to drugstore prices. But I did have some trouble finding indie brands that measured things the way that I like things to be measured. A lot of indie brands like to measure things by the size of the pan, the millimeters, rather than the number of grams. So I, I didn't want to, you know, I wanted to compare apples to apples. So I found some indie brands that do talk about their grams. The Cat's Pajamas palette is two gram pans. There's 10 of them and it's a $40 palette making it $2 per gram. So the first one is Colored Rain. They have their Queen of Hearts palette. It's $50 for 17.5 grams of product, equaling $2.86 per gram. So it is about 86 cents less per gram than Colored Rain. Colored Rain is cruelty-free, not vegan. They do appear to be talc-free. I did compare it also to ColourPop to the Yes Please palette. Now I did email ColourPop and I asked them about the size of their pans, whether the palette size pans are the same as their single shadow pans. They gave me a very unclear answer. I'll put it up here on the screen. But for the purposes of this video, we're gonna assume they're the exact same size as their individual pans. So the Yes Please palette is $16 for 12 eyeshadows. They are 1.2 gram pans, so they are about half the size of Laura's, a little more than half the size. You get 14.4 grams total, which is $1.11 per gram. So they are, what is that, 89 cents more a gram for Laura's formula. When you buy a palette, you kind of expect to get a little bit of a discount on the single eyeshadow purchase. So the single pans are $4, 1.2 grams each. That makes them $3.33 per gram for the single shadow. So yes, they are less expensive than the ColourPop singles per gram, but they are actually more expensive than if you buy it in a palette from ColourPop. Now, Luxie Beauty, they don't sell palettes. They only sell the singles. So we have to go buy that. We have $5 for one 1.3 gram single shadows, which is $3.84 per gram. They are not talc free, they're cruelty free, but they're not vegan. And then let's talk about Makeup Geek. Now Makeup Geek, the In The Nude palette is $50. You get nine 1.8 gram pans and they are 16.2 grams total, which is $3.07 for each gram of product in her palette. Um, I did contact Makeup Geek to make sure that they were the same size and Makeup Geek confirmed that the palette shadows were the exact same size as her singles. So you are getting a better deal with Laura's palette than you would with a Makeup Geek palette. The single shadows are $6 each and those are $3.33 per gram. So she does give a little bit of a discount when you buy it in a palette. They are cruelty free. They're not completely talc free, but when there is talc, it seems like it's really low down on the ingredient list and they are not vegan. We're gonna stop right here for just a second because I did have someone comment about that they would prefer to buy Zoeva over this palette and I really felt like I wanted to include that information. So I checked out the Blanc Fusion palette. It's $26.50, you get 10 shadows at 1.5 grams, that's 15 grams total, which makes it $1.77 per gram, which is less expensive than Laura's, but not by a whole lot. It's not talc free, they are cruelty free, but they are not vegan. So I just wanted to throw that one in there because I know a a lot of people are really loving Zoeva right now. 
So compared to other independently owned brands, Laura's falls kind of in the middle. It's a little more expensive than some, but it's less expensive than other ones. Because I didn't expect how difficult it would be to get information comparisons, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compile a list of other comparisons of other indie brands down in the description below. Just for kicks and giggles, I decided I was gonna compare the price per gram to some drugstore eyeshadow palettes. So if you look at the Maybelline City Mini Palette Graffiti, pops. It's $9.99, so you're paying less up front for 3.9 grams of product. You don't get a lot of product in there. That leads to $2.52 per gram, so that makes Laura's less expensive. The CoverGirl Rose's True Naked Eyeshadow Palette is $12.99. You get 6.52 grams of product, so that's $1.99 per gram, so it's basically the exact same value per gram as Laura's palette. From what I know, Models Own is a brand new brand that's sold at Ulta. I'm not 100% sure on how brand new the brand is, but I'm pretty sure it's brand new. They have a, something called a Supernatural eyeshadow palette. It's $17.99, it's 6.8 grams of product, and you're paying $2.65 per gram, so that's 65 cents more than Laura's palette. Now, some products that are less expensive than Laura's palette would be like the BH Cosmetics Supernova 18 Color Baked Eyeshadow Palette. You're only gonna pay 46 cents per gram for that palette, which is really inexpensive. And then the Makeup Revolution Golden Bar Palette, $15 for that one, you're gonna pay 69 cents per gram of product. So it can can compete with some drugstore products as far as price per gram, but there are definitely some better values out there. I have to say I've never personally tried any of these palettes, but if you have, maybe you can speak to the quality of those products and whether you think based on what you're seeing from this palette, whether it's similar quality or not, I would imagine based on my experience with all of those brands except for Model Zone, which I haven't tried any of their shadows, um, they're not as good quality typically from those brands as this palette is. One thing I wanna mention about talking about price per gram is this is assuming that you're going to hit pan. If you're a makeup collector, it's not really gonna be about price per gram for you because you're never gonna hit pan anyway. Uh, like that's kind of the way it is for me. So all of that that I just said is basically irrelevant if you never ha wanna hit pan. What you're gonna be concerned about is the quality of the shadows and the shade selection and things like that. And that's what we're gonna get into right now with the swatches, both finger and brush swatches. They are done over no primer. Uh, and I'm gonna go and show you right now. All right, this is the Laura Lee Los Angeles Cat's Pajamas Eyeshadow Palette in all of its glittery glory. We are gonna be doing swatches on my skin tone, which is a light to light medium, my friend Jenny's skin tone, which is a medium, and my friend Debbie, who is a deeper skin tone. So let's go ahead and get started with my swatches. This is Okie Dokie, Scatterbrain, Bomb Diggity, and Cray Cray. Now, Okie Dokie is the one that I've had the most trouble with on my eyes. I've had a lot of trouble getting it to show up uh, you'll see the brush swatch in a second is absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to keep playing with this one. I haven't given up hope on Okie Dokie, but so far it's not my favorite. Scatterbrain is beautiful on the eye. It is a bright, bright, bright foiled shade. I really love it. Bomb Diggity is a nice matte, but Cray Cray is my favorite matte in the palette. It's really, really nice. So that is the first four all together. My favorites in this quad are Scatterbrained and Cray Cray. And if you're new to my channel, you're new to the wipe test. This is supposed to simulate wear time uh, and whether the eyeshadow will stain the eye or stain the skin. So you'll see that Scatterbrain and Okie Dokie are gone. I haven't had a problem with Scatterbrain having bad lasting power, but you may want to use a glitter glue if you are nervous about that. Let's go ahead and move on to Redonkulous, Quirky, Kooky, and In One Ear. These are my four favorite shades in the palette. They are absolutely gorgeous. Um, I feel like Kooky swatches really badly, but it performs very well on the eye. One thing you're gonna notice about these swatches of these four on all three of our skin tones is that they are very buildable with the brush. You'll, I'm gonna go in and build them with each of us so you can see how they layer on top of each other. Uh, I really like that actually because when you're blending them together, it's nice to be able to build back and forth and not go on at full pigmentation. It makes it a lot easier to to use rather than something like the subculture that goes on like in one punch you know what I mean so I personally really prefer the buildable formula as long as it builds and these four shades all build beautifully I don't really have favorites in this four I like them all they're all very very nice
pin onto the wipe test, you'll see they all hang out there. Just to secure yourself, you may want to use a glitter glue with Redonculus, but I honestly haven't had a problem with wear time with that shade. Last two shades are Out the Other and Oddball. And you'll notice again, Out the Other brush swatches really, really, really bad. I'm gonna show you another brush in a minute, so don't give up hope on Out the Other. <laughs> Um, you can see Oddball is definitely not the black. Oh, yeah, so I accidentally swatched, brush swatched it twice. We're just, whatever. <laughs> We're just going to try to wipe that off. Uh, yeah. But you'll see that Oddball really is more of a deepening shade rather than a really, really thick black. Unless you spray some kind of Fix Plus on it, it's really going to be something to just kind of deepen the other colors without um, being like a really super harsh black. It's not a super pigmented black, 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 inky black. Both of these shades I like. I don't think they're the strongest shades in the palette, but I like them. And you can see with the wipe test, they both hang out there pretty well. So these are going to have, most likely, very good lasting power. Now here is my friend Jenny introducing you to her. She is of Filipino descent. She has a medium skin tone. Uh, so this is what Okie Dokie, Scatterbrained, Bomb Diggity, and Cray Cray look like on her. I do apologize, it does go out of focus a little bit and it was just because I didn't notice while she was here and I couldn't call her back over to, to do this again, but I promise you, you'll be able to see them all very well. They all look really beautiful on her. Except for Bomb Diggity, that one's starting to get really close to her skin tone, so that might be a really nice olive over lid color for her. Moving on to the next four, and we literally gasped when we saw Redonculus on her. We went, <gasps> it was crazy. Um, these shimmer shades are just glowing on her skin tone. They look even better than they did on me, like by far. Um, but as you can see with the brush swatches, we kind of had the same problem that, not problem, but the same thing with, with me is that they definitely need to be built up to full opacity. But this is also nice if you like an, a lighter look and you don't like things super punchy. Personally, I like like things really really punchy so building it up is very important to me but um, but yeah it's nice to have that option in case you want to go for a lighter more muted look and you can see they all build up really really nicely yeah, I thought I had a nice enough swatch of kooky so I kind of let that go so this is the next four on Jenny skin and I think they look absolutely gorgeous again that's my favorite uh, those are my favorite shades in the palette on to the last two out the other and oddball we have the same swatching thing with out the other where it's super super light not too much difference here with the performance of these on her versus me uh, you can see that the oddball shade really does look nice and smooth they, they all look very smooth on her which I didn't think really came off as well on me now let's move on to Debbie with her deep skin and this time scatterbrained made us go <gasps> We were like, oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. You can't really see Bomb Diggity very well on her. Um, I'm not sure if that would be a great shade for her. Women of deeper skin tone would probably be able to say better. Again, I'm sorry, it's blurry. I'm gonna fix it in just a second. Cray Cray is just beautiful on her. Again, that's my favorite matte shade in the palette. I really like it a lot. Moving on to Redonculus, Quirky, Kooky, and In One Ear. Again, just the same with Jenny. I feel like these really popped on her, except for Kooky. I feel like Kooky is really falling flat as far as the uh, finger swatches here, but maybe with on her eyes, maybe it would look better. You can really see the purple of Quirky here and really see that true purple shade that I feel like is so vibrant on her and not as vibrant on me and Jenny. In One Ear also has this pink color on her that, that definitely I don't think shows up as well on me and Jenny as it does on, or I should say Jenny and I, <laughs> as it does on Debbie. And those are my four favorite shades in the palette again. They're so pretty. <laughs> And finally, we're gonna swatch out the other and oddball on Debbie, and these are both beautiful on her. The brush swatch of out the other, again, pretty, pretty stinking weak, but again, on my eyes, they really did look nice, so I'm thinking that it's just a swatch thing. I don't know, but the second swatch actually does look pretty good on her. Um, definitely think this is a great palette for deep skin tones based on the swatches on Debbie's skin. I think it looks fantastic. 
after I finished filming with all of our swatches, I realized that people were really gonna get on me about not using a flat synthetic brush. So this is a ColourPop brush, and I decided to use this to swatch them. Now I did have to go in multiple times to get this level of opacity with this brush. Um, this particular brush did not work well with this palette. I think I just need to invest in another brush like this to get you better swatches with this kind of brush. Um, so, you know, it is what it is, but just know that I had to go in, you know, three and four times with some of these shades to get this level of opacity with that particular brush. All right, now you have seen the swatches. Let's go ahead and show you the demo of how I got this look today. So yeah, let's go ahead and show the demo of how I got this look today. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I don't usually do talk through tutorial slash demos. First of all, the, t the voiceovers take longer and I got a rush to get this one up before the palette comes out uh, so that you know whether you want to buy it or not. What is that? And number two, I want to make sure that I am telling you how I feel in the moment, not after I've thought about it later. I do want to let you know I accidentally got some glitter on my beauty blender and put it on my face. So you'll see random specks of gold glitter on my face right now. I got off as much as I could and I just, I'm running out of time. So um, that is not due to the palette. That is me accidentally dipping my nail into an MBA Cosmetics glitter and getting it on my beauty blender. So let's go ahead and get started and we're going to use my brand new uh, Luxie Jasmine brush for my crease color and we're going to start with Bomb Diggity which is this one right here and this is a perfect crease color for me. I have put these on my eyes four times at this point, not as many as I had hoped, um, but I have put them on quite a bit and I'm going to try to recreate one of the looks that I had done um, actually, what I might do is redo the one that I did for What's Up in Makeup that I got a ton of compliments on this weekend and nobody knew what palette it was from. So let's go ahead and I think what I, yes. Okay, so what I did was I took my fingertips and I went into Scatterbrained and then Redonkulous. And I put Scatterbrained on the inner corner to the center and then Redonkulous on the outer corner to the center. You can do this with, um, you can do this with a flat synthetic brush, but I personally am a fingertip kind of girl, so I am doing it with my fingertips because that's what I like. And this is one thing I love, is if you watch how they're crossing over each other, I really like how they mix together because they're not overpowering each other, they're blending nicely into each other, which I love. Now, when using a brush, there is fallout. I'm just letting you know, you might wanna be careful with the shimmer shades and fallout. Now we're gonna go in to Kooky, because I wanna make sure I use some of these matte shades just right over the transition color. Okay, and you could actually leave the look right there if you wanted to. Um, I am going to just to um, deepen it up a little bit, I'm gonna go into out the other, and I'm just gonna kinda swirl that in the outer corner to deepen it up. And I'm just going about halfway up into my crease. Okay, now I'm gonna take the Sigma E30 brush and I'm going to take, let's do out the other on the lower lash line. Okay, now I'm just gonna take, uh, let's see, hmm, let's do, let's do scatterbrain, let's be brave. Make sure I tap off my brush and I'm just gonna bring that on the lower lash line over. I'm just going to take this little q-tip and just clean up and sharpen up the edges here. You can do this with tape, you can do this with um, a shadow shield, but I just like to use a q-tip. There's definitely fallout on my face from Scatterbrained. Not all of it is that MPA. You saw how much there was before, and now I've got more. One thing that's good though, is I haven't noticed fallout through the day that's that much worse. Um, it'll fall a little bit more off my eyes, but what you might wanna do, another alternative would be to use glitter glue over top um, of the primer or add a substitute for the primer to kind of make that shadow stick. I know some people use glitter glue for, shim for all shimmer shadows, which is probably a good idea, but I wanted to show you without. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, let's go ahead and take Okie Dokie, which is this shade right here, and let's just blend out the brow bone just a little bit. 
There we go, that's better. Now it looks more finished. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of my face and I will be right back. All right, the rest of my face is done, but I really like the way that the look came out. I'm wearing California by Benefit on my cheeks. Highlighter is Makeup Geek's Midnight Sun, and the lip color is the Stay Matte Liquid Lip Color by Rimmel in the shade Be My Baby. I said in the past this was called Rosetto Liquido. That is not correct, just so you know. If you've ever heard me say that before, I was quite wrong. So uh, let me go ahead and zoom in on my eyes so you can see how the eye look came out. And just a reminder, I am not a makeup artist. This is, you know, former teacher, mom, eyeshadow look, not trained makeup artist. <laughs> I just realized I don't think I redid my liner over top, but I don't think you can tell. Oh, one of my lashes are a little funky. This one's a little funky, it's a little poofy. Let's fix that. There we go, that's better. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom you out now and we'll get back to the review. Let's go ahead and do a little comparison to some other palettes that I already own, just kind of eyeballing them. Just to show you a little comparison between this palette and like let's say the Naked Heat palette. So this is those two next to each other. We do have some similar shades, but definitely some things that are different. I feel like the gold in here is what I wanted for the Naked Heat, uh, that I wish that the Naked Heat had, but there are some similar shades in here. It's kind of a similar type of thing, but I do feel like you're going to get different shades if you do have the Naked Heat. This palette is going to be different. Here is it next to the new Too Faced Just Peachy Mattes palette, and of course they are quite different, but just so you can see the size of the pans and the color selection and how they compare. Of course, the peach palette is much peachier, but just to give you an idea. This is the original Too Faced Peach Palette, so you can kind of see how those shades compare there. The Anastasia Modern Renaissance Palette looks like that there, and there is quite a bit of similarity, I think, between these. I think more than any others, I feel like these are similar. Uh, they're definitely not the same, but they're similar. And then this is the Queen of Hearts palette by Colored Rain. This is one of my favorite palettes of all time. It's amazing. And it looks like this. This shade right here, Scatterbrain, reminds me a lot of the Colored Rain shades, this Royal Highness and Your Majesty shade. It's very flaky and chunky. So um, definitely keep that in mind if you've had tried these before. This one is a very similar formula. I feel like the other shimmers are just a little bit different than this one. Just to kind of put Your Majesty and Redonkulous next to each other. They're very, very similar. This is Your Majesty from Colored Rain, and then this is Redonkulous from Cat's Pajamas. So now it is time for me to give you my full review of this palette. I am taking Laura out of my mind. I am pretending she doesn't exist, and I'm going to review this palette for you from a very objective point of view based on my opinions, if that makes sense. One of the biggest complaints that I hear about this palette, because Laura has gotten a lot of heat from this palette, is that it's very boring. And I would have to say, the shade selection, I kind of agree with you in that you have some browns here, some, you know, shades of brown and gold, and then you've got maroons, and you've got this black and this white. I wish that she had been a little more creative in the color selection. I do have to say the shade Quirky is very unique to my collection. I did a halo eye with this shade and this shade and it looked gorgeous. Um, and it's more purple than it's showing in the pan. Hopefully you saw that in the swatches. And I really loved it. And I loved that it stayed a true purple and didn't turn gray because a lot of purples will turn gray on me and they look terrible. But I can totally see that critique on this, is that it'll provide kind of a limited number of looks because it is just two kinds of colors. And Laura loves these kinds of colors, so I can see why she picked them. Um, I do wish that she had replaced this black with a deep brown. I feel like the black really kind of throws everything. If you see some of the tutorials of people using this, Jeffree Star comes to mind where he throws the black up in the crease. It looks really weird, in my opinion. I did not enjoy that look very much, and that has nothing to do with Jeffree at all. I just didn't enjoy that look. Um, I just... I feel like the black is kind of out of place. I do feel like this white is definitely should be there. I, I'm glad that she put it there, but it's not my favorite shade in the palette. It's definitely my least favorite. It's the most powdery. It's the one that I know I'm kind of like, mm, like I might have to reach for one from another palette. But other than that, I think these shadows are fantastic as far as the quality. They're really, really good. But as far as the boring thing, I get you, I hear you, I kind of agree. 
The next big critique is that this is not a very cohesive palette. This is just, I mean, it's lore in a palette. People say, you know, there's nothing about cats in here. Why is it called cat's pajamas if there's no cats? And it's because cat's pajamas, it's the saying, it's not actual cats. It's the saying of it. But I can totally see that point too, you know, that we've got glitter, we've got flowers, and we've got names that apply to her. So I can see that point as well, uh, that it's not, the theme isn't really super strong unless you know Laura. And as much as I know her, this fits pretty well. <laughs> And I say that with the most love in my heart because I do really like her a lot. I think she's a wonderful person. Hold on, I let her go back into my head for a second. Okay, I'm pushing her back out. I'm pushing her back out of my head. But I can see someone not liking the lack of cohesiveness in the palette. I totally get that. The last big one that I heard a lot is that she is an indie brand. This is her first product and she doesn't really have the right to charge $40 for an eyeshadow palette. If you watch the value section of this video, you'll see that it is really a fair price for what you get. Now, I don't know of any indie brands that start off at one price point and then raise their prices later. Like, have you ever seen a brand do that? I don't know if that's a strategy that's real where you start at a lower price point because you're a new brand. And I think that sometimes people will suggest something like that and people jump on it without really thinking about whether that's real or not. Because I don't, I honestly, I've never heard of a brand having coming out with a low price point and then upping their prices later. I think people would be mad. I think I would be mad, <laughs> you know? If she started at a lower price point and then all of a sudden it got more expensive. I don't know. I don't know, that's just me. Based on the quality of the shadows, I feel like $2 per gram is fair. Because she has so many younger fans and because she, I've heard people call her the drugstore queen, I almost wish that she had done like an eight shadow palette where the pans were like 1.5 grams each and then brought it down to like $25. I feel like that would have been better accepted than a 10 pan palette at $40, if that makes sense. Just giving less product for a less expensive price. I saw people say in my comment section, more than one person say that they thought this palette looked like it was worth $10. I don't know where you're shopping for $10 eyeshadow palettes, but if you can let me know where you can get a palette like this for $10, I want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> like, I will be so excited to go there because the closest that I have to something like that would be like five below. I'm thinking of like city color palettes where the pigmentation is kind of hit and miss and the quality of the ingredients is not good at all. Uh, I'm also thinking like Hot Topic eyeshadow palettes that are made in China, they're mass produced. When you're starting a makeup brand on your own, you don't have that luxury of being a huge company with millions of dollars to kind of soften the blow if you chop the prices down at first. Now, ColourPop started off as a smaller brand, um, but that was before they came up with eyeshadow palettes. They had the, um, the single shadows for a really long time. The Super Shock shadows was all they had in the lippies for a while. So I don't know what the cost was on those when they started, but they sure weren't coming up with eyeshadow, pressed eyeshadow palettes. So yes, a brand like ColourPop might be able to start off with, you know, the Super Shock shadows and the liquid lipsticks and kind of rock it. Um, but they definitely had a lot of money that they had already where Laura is just one person. You know what I mean? Like they were a company and she's just a person. I don't know if you see the difference there, but I see the difference. So where I want to leave this with you is who do I think this is good for and who do I think this is not good for? So let's start with those people that I don't think should purchase this. I don't think you should purchase this if you already have these shades. I don't think that you're going to find it to be outstandingly different from the other shadows that you own. Also, if you don't like warm tone palettes, then this is definitely not going to be for you. If your budget is less than $40 and you just don't have cash for something like this, this is definitely not going to be for you. If, you, if the design bothers you and you really just don't like the way it looks, it's not gonna be for you. I don't think that it's fair to throw this out saying that it is not a good value. I think that that has been disproven in this video. It is a good value for the amount of product you get. So that should not be the reason why you don't get it. But if it's over your price range, if it doesn't seem to be worth the $40 to you, then of course you would not get it. But don't get it because you don't think it's worth the value as in price per gram. Now, who this would be good for, of course, is Laura Lee lovers. People that love her, want to support her, of course, is going to be the number one audience for this. Also, if you like very highly pigmented, easy to blend shadows, and you enjoy this color scheme, that is who is going to want to purchase this. Now, I've been asked if this was not sent to me by Laura, would I have purchased it? And I have to be honest with you, the only reason why I would have purchased this is because I would want to support her. If I didn't know her, if I didn't know 
know this brand, I would not have purchased this eyeshadow palette because I do have a lot of these shades already in my collection and I feel like it's kind of doubling up on things. So yes, I would have bought it because I've met Laura before and because I really like her, but no, I wouldn't have bought it if Laura wasn't attached to it. I do want to make sure that I'm very clear though that the not purchase has nothing to do with the quality of the shadows. The quality of the shadows it's, is fantastic, but it's just the color scheme I probably wouldn't have wanted to double up on colors that I already own. So I hope that, you know. That's where I'm personally feeling on it. So you just have to decide for yourself where you stand on it because we all have different things that we like and enjoy. And hopefully in this video, I provided you with enough information so that you can make a decision on what you think about purchasing this palette on October 13th. So I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, definitely make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. While you're there, you can hit the bell for notifications if you like so you're notified when I make a new video. I put out about nine videos a week, five makeup minute news shows on Monday through Friday. We have our full makeup news show on Sunday and then I usually put up three other videos, typically reviews during the week. Those typically happen on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So thank you again so, so much for watching and mad love to you and I will see you in a video soon.